back to my channel. It has been a minute since the last time I made a video. My name is Nico, if you're new here. And today I have a very special guest. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Kinney. And she is actually a preclinical student at the same school that I'm in. You probably saw her video. She took the MCAT and made a video about how she was able to increase her score. And for the people who know who I am, they know that I've taken the MCAT twice. So this video is going to talk about what we did to make sure that our score went up the second time that we took it. We're gonna be super transparent, tell you what resources we use, what our scores were, and what you guys can do to either do well the first time you take your MCAT or do better the second time you do, because it's definitely possible. First, we're gonna talk about just who we are. So again, I'm a third year medical student, so I'm in my clinical rotation. I am a second year medical student. I'm in my preclinical. I'm on my last block in neuro before I start my clinical rotations. I took my MCAT in 2017 and 2018, so it's been a it's been a hot minute. Again, I said that we're going to be super transparent on this channel. So the first time I took the MCAT, I got a 499, which was like in the 50th percentile, and the second time I got a 510, which was like in the 80, I think it's like the 83rd percentile. And I took my MCAT and got a 503 the first time. I think it was like in the 50 to 60 percentile, something yeah. like that. And then I ended up getting a 518 my second time, which I believe was a 97 percentile at the time. That's amazing. So like, as you can see, like your score can definitely go up. And you know, a lot of people told me that your score can't go up. Like people said, it's a standardized test. The score that you get is kind of like your score. And I know a lot of people said that like kind of your score doesn't change. And I know that's completely false because it's not fair. It's not true at all. It's a standardized test. A standardized test means that you can learn how to study for it. I kind of say this on my channel, I don't think that being a doctor or doing well in the MCAT has anything to do with like how smart you are. It's like how hard you're going to work for and how dedicated you are for it yeah. and you can absolutely improve. So one of the most commonly asked questions that I get is did you use a course when you prepared for the MCAT? And for me, I did a course that my university provided the first time I studied and that was like an eight month course. I did not find it super helpful at all. I actually had to retake the MCAT. Um, and then the second time I bought an online course, like a, one of those self-guided courses from Princeton Review. I didn't really use it too much. I just used it for the sections I was weaker, weakest in, but I mainly self-studied the second time. Um, the first time around I self-studied, I gave myself like too short of time to actually self-study. I thought I could like handle it but I absolutely couldn't. So the second time around, I thought if I bought a course then that would help me like pull my life together and mm -hmm. like start studying the material. Um, I didn't really like the course that I bought. I got the gold standard review, which is kind of like one of the lesser known, like normally it's like Kaplan or Princeton. I never heard of that one. <laughs> yeah, it was like a lot of money still, but a little bit cheaper than the Kaplan mm -hmm. or Princeton one. Um, I didn't really like the formatting and I felt like there was too many like grammatical errors, etc., in it. So I really kind of went back to like my basic fundamentals and did a lot of self-study with my favorite resources. Yeah, I think that the courses can be helpful for some people. I don't think that they're, you know, completely useless, right? But I feel like you need to be the type of person that like can sit there and watch all the videos and like do that. For me, it was just better to sit down, open the book and then just take my own notes. But mm -hmm. that was my experience and that's what really helped me out the second time. Okay, so we're going to talk about what are the best, you know, resources for each section and how we studied for it. So for the chem phys, we can start with that one. So chemistry and physics was the hardest section, one of the harder sections for me. And what I found the most helpful were the, the Princeton Review books. I thought they were the best for the physical sciences. For me, um, I feel like I studied Kempfas the most. Um, I relied on Kaplan. I okay. had the Princeton books, but for some reason Kaplan just like clicked with me the way that I needed it to. Okay. Um, and then I also bought the Sterling um, Question Bank books from Amazon. We can leave the link because I forget like the full name of it. Yeah, we'll put it all in the link down below. Yeah, but those questions were really good. I will mention the Orgo question books. We're just like way too in depth, like way more detail than you need to know for the MCAT. But the other books were really helpful, kind of helping me practice. So for Kaplan, I actually felt that the Kaplan books were super good for the bio section. So I used Kaplan books for bio and biochem, and then I used Princeton Review for the physical sciences. Oh, and the resource that I found the most helpful though was really double AMC, and that goes across all sections. I feel like no matter what AAMC questions, everything that AAMC provides is 
the most helpful use. I'll echo that. Like they give you very few resources like from the company themselves, mm -hmm. but the ones that they give are like super high yield and you gotta do them. You <laughs> have to do that. That was one of my biggest like differences is I invested in like their resources mm -hmm. and they were just the best, the best out there. For the bio section, um, I ended up getting a perfect score just using the Kaplan okay. books. So I'll kind of echo like the bio, like Kaplan was the best. I don't know if it was like a fluke though, because on my practice exams, my bio was a bit lower. So I don't know, bio was my, was uh, I didn't get any perfect score. So bio was like 129 for me. And I felt like everything was pretty much in Kaplan, but I don't know. <laughs> Kaplan just is like really good. If you like take the time to like go through it, go through it, and the little like side notes on the side, the key points, yeah, and the margins. So how did you study? Because one of the questions that I get a lot is, do you, did you like read, take notes? Did you just read the book? Oh, I wrote everywhere in the book. I went through and I did highlights. Then I went through and read again. I did underlines. I did like stars. I put like um, in any any image. Uh -huh. I got those like little sticky notes, the like really thin ones, and yeah. I covered up the words. So it was kind of like a flashcard in the book. Like an Anki, like an old school Anki. An old school Anki. I would cover. I would like image include the the words, and then I would guess what it is, and I'd look under the sticky note. And... Repetition was the best for me, honestly. Like I read the books, but I I made my own outlines on the books, which. I mean, it took a long time, but it was helpful for me. But just rereading them, doing those image occlusions, cover, I would cover parts of the book and then test myself, what is under this piece of paper, mm, right? What exactly. is the next word of the sentence? What is the concept that is covered by this, like, this post-it? And I did that a lot when studying for the material itself. I agree, a lot of repetition. I, I didn't use outlines that much, I tried. I tried pretty much everything. Um, it just didn't work for me, but um, I will agree just repetition in any way that works for you is like going to be the, the best. best. So next we can talk about cars because cars was a struggle for me. I so hard. got a 122 the first time I took the car section and I thought that I was never going to get it anywhere higher than that. And the second time I got a 127. So. I mean, I made all these videos on the method that I use, but basically I read the questions first, outlined the questions, and then went to the passage. What did you do? Um, well, I think the first time I took cards, I got 124, and I was just like, can, can I not read? Like, am I not like capable? Because I did really well in like the ACT reading section, so I just assumed that I would be able to like mm -hmm. do fine on this one. Um, it was actually the hardest section. It was one of both psych and social and cars was like one of my last minute effort to try to like boost my score. Okay. And so I changed up my method a lot. I ended up like reading the question first and then I would start reading the passage until I found the question, okay. answer the question, read the next question, continue reading. Cause the questions are actually pretty much in chronological order. Okay. Chronological order. So as I read the passage, I would be searching exactly for what the question was asking. That's exactly what I did too. And I thought that was so helpful. People said that that wouldn't work and it 100% did, but I didn't go in order. So I would read all the questions. I would just be like, what is the point of this question? They want to know in paragraph three, what did this word mean? Okay. What in the next question, like I would get the main takeaway of each question. And then when I would read the passage, I would just slow down when I got to that part and answer the question right then and there. Mm -hmm. I think the first time I did it, I tried to skim through there. Like some researchers said, skim through the passage, read the question and go back and find that the question. That didn't work. Mm, that takes so much time. And like the MCAT is like a really fast exam. Like you will barely have enough time to finish if you're like on top of it. No, I just went to the questions, found what is the question asking? What do I have to take out of this huge passage? went to the passage, slowed down when I saw something that related to one of the questions that I read, and as soon as I read that, I would read the following sentence and then answer the question. I think I got, I have to check, it was either a 127 or 129. I improved quite a bit on my uh, car section, but uh, it's a flawless method for us. So for the bio section, I guess we kind of talked about this, but I used the Kaplan books for bio, I just outlined the chapters, I covered you know, the pages as I read through, and I found that double AMC material, like the section bank, the question banks, do not go into your test without doing double AMC materials two times. <laughs> so I feel like the bio section, the most representative was the double AMC materials. 
I agree. Um, I did those a lot. I never got like a perfect score bio. It was kind of like one of my lower scores okay. for my practice exams for the AAMC. But I think that just goes to show like if you're going back and like reviewing what you got wrong, like how much you can improve your score and like the real thing. 100%. Um, so I mostly use Kaplan. Again, I use the Sterling Question Bank books okay. and uh, just the AAMC. And for Psych Social. How was that for you? Because some people say it's super hard. I felt like if you just do the, there's like a document, I can link it down below. It's called the 81 page OCD Psych Soch document. That's I could, what I did. <laughs> it was the best resource. When you're done reading that resource, I felt like you could answer any question on like that section for the most part. I feel like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's pre-med95 was the Reddit user who like published it. I don't know who it was, but bless them because I printed that, I read the 81 pages, I did 10 pages a day for 8 days, and then I just reread the whole packet over and over and over again. By that time, um, I had, so once you start taking like the official like AMC practice exams, it's kind of when you get a grasp on like how you're scoring. Well, shock to me, I was scoring very low on Psych and Soch, like okay. a month out from my exam, even like two weeks out from my exam, I was still, so I like did a last minute ditch and got a, a tutor that I did like two sessions with and kind of got his study strategies. Mm -hmm. I found the document and this is when I discovered the greatness of Anki. Anki is amazing and I did not use it for MCAT, oh but my gosh. if I could go back in time, I probably would have. <laughs> I like didn't know what the program was. I was just kind of like fooling around with it. I the I believe the the document that you're talking about. I think that they took that and made it into Anki cards. That would have been amazing because I spent the whole time doing rep. So the point is rep rep repetition, right? So I read the document multiple times. So Same. it would have been more effective to just do Anki cards on that document. I would read it before work every day after work. I would like live and breathe on that document and just hope that it like osmosed into my brain and um, going through questions with my tutor honestly I would go through questions and say why I got this question like why I chose this answer and then they would kind of help me um, reason through why that was wrong and why I might consider the other option and I think if you're having trouble with like foundational concepts I'm not very good at psych and social like on the base level like my brain doesn't think the way it's mm -hmm. supposed to think with the questions and just kind of like rewiring how you look at the question yeah 100 percent. and that brings me to i guess our final question which is just like how do you you know use these practice questions to learn and i think the best way is you know answer the question read it what was the main takeaway of this question and let's say the answer was c right so that means that answer a b d and e are wrong but those are all learning points. So go through the learning points of each option choice within each question. And if you do that, you'll learn so much more when you go over your practice test. So before we go, make sure to go ahead and like and comment on this video. So if you have any questions, make sure to link them down below. Make sure to go check out her channel. Everything will be down in the down bar. I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs>